What's going on YouTube? This is Necrostevo, and it's time for the first battle for week one of season three of the Indigo League of Legends. Now, um, I'm going to be doing more of a uh, team analysis like I did for the Pokemon Premier League for these. I'm a little bit sick, so I won't be doing one for this video. I will give you a brief overview of my team. My week one match is against Mac, of course, of Rockets Game Corner. If you haven't seen his channel, definitely go check it out. I like his narrations. He's a great battler. Fantastic personality, too. He's very entertaining narrations. Um, but you who have followed the Indigo League of Legends before might know that I've lost against him in both previous seasons. So there is a lot riding on this battle. I really, really wanted to win this battle. It was very, it was not only just kind of like a pride thing, but it was like a rival thing. And I just, also, I just want to win. Come on, who doesn't want to win? Uh, so, um, of course, in this season of the Indigo League of Legends, there are no Uber Pokemon, so I don't have to contend with Mega Mawile, which is nice. I was really worried about Mac's capacity to bring dual weather to this battle. Uh, he drafted the cores of Hippowdon alongside Stoutland and Charizard X and Ferrothorn. And he also had access to Kingdra with uh, Meowstic, which can set priority rain. So I really thought he would be bringing Charizard X... Hippowdon, Ferrothorn, Abandoned Me and Shao, uh, his Stoutland, and uh, maybe switching between some of those other Pokemon there to set up some type of weather. But I was actually correct. He does end up bringing quite a few of the Pokemon that I anticipated he'd have. Uh, to counteract that, I went with the Scarfed Aurorus to kind of be a revenge killer and to get rid of his weather. I have a modest uh, Charizard Y with Flamethrower, that way I don't have to mess around with Fire Blast missing, and I can 2-hit KO basically every member of his team, bar an Assault Vest. Crawdont is a great revenge killer to a number of his teammates. And then I have a defensive Rhyperior and a defensive Ferrothorn just to stop the likes of Charizard X and me and Chow from Raffle stomping my team. Uh, also, he didn't have any spinners, so I thought I could hazard stack relatively easy against his team, and that was something that I wanted to try out as well during the battle. Now he does start out with me and Shao. I started off with Charizard Y just in case he wanted to start Ferrothorn or his own Hippowdon. But since he starts with me and Shao, I need to see if he's Scarfed. I also need to see if he has Stealth Rock. I'm not Stealth Rock, Stone Edge, excuse me. So I'm just going to go straight on to Ferrothorn, and that's going to allow me to get some Rocky Helmage damage on him. But more importantly, I see the Life Orb recoil. So I know he's not Scarfed or Bandit, and that means Aurora's can outspeed him. So that's fantastic. As long as I stop the Charizard X from setting up, Aurorus is going to be great in this matchup. Now, as he turns out and goes into Ferrothorn, I figured he's going to set up the Stealth Rock, so I just double back out into Charizard. Uh, Stealth Rocks do go up. I'm happy that I got Charizard in here because I avoid that Stealth Rock damage, and I can pressure his entire team with Flamethrower. The only thing he had that resisted Flamethrower was Kingdra, and as my co-coach uh, co Aquaclauncher asked me, am I real? I was like... I am real, and so I decided to go for a Dragon Pulse there, even though Flamethrower hit every other member of his team a lot better. So Dragon Pulse does hit Kingdra a lot more strongly. Uh, unfortunately, it's an Assault Vest variant, so it basically is... It, I mean, it's better than me using Flamethrower on the Switch, but I didn't expect Assault Vest. Uh, so this is going to be a 3-hit KO as he goes for Hidden Power Rock. Man, that is a lot of damage. Uh, but fortunately, it's not Stab and uh, Charizard Y picks up a little bit higher defense upon Mega Evolving, so I'm able to take it. I do need to make sure I roost up because right now if I switch out and back in and don't get rid of the rocks, I lose Charizard. Uh, he goes out into Reuniclus, and I figured that he would just try to start Calm Minding up. So I just went for Roost, and he surprises me here by actually going for status and crippling my Charizard Y with Thunder Wave. Uh, if anyone on his team was going to use Thunder Wave, I did not see uh, Reuniclus using that move. Uh, maybe a Trick Room set or something like that. Didn't see that happening. Uh, he further surprises me with Future Sight. I just went for Flamethrower here because I wanted solid damage on Reuniclus and kind of to pressure it. Based on that damage, we know he's special defensive because otherwise I definitely would have been able to probably one hit KO him if he were physically defensive or offensive. Uh, but the burn doesn't matter, of course, because he does have Magic Guard and he's not using physical attacks. As he goes on into Hippowdon, I just went for... I just thought it made sense to just keep going for Flamethrower. 
But on the other hand, he does get that free priority there. So I'm going to go out here and I, I was going to use it as an opportunity to spin. Uh, getting the rocks off the field were paramount. Um, I have a couple of Pokemon that are weak to them. Plus, I wanted to have Charizard around for further wall breaking in the in the future. Uh, he goes for a whirlwind and he had a one in six chance to send me out into Embor on the future sight hit. That sucked. That was the one thing on my team that couldn't take Future Sight. And it just comes in and gets blown away by Future Sight because of Whirlwind. And it's a crit. So even if I had the berry to live a psychic type hit, it wouldn't have mattered. So that that was very disheartening. It's like really the one thing on my team that couldn't take Future Sight. Crawdon's immune. Fortress resist. I have uh, the Sandstorm is up in Rhyperior would have gotten a special defense boost. Uh, Charizard Y wouldn't have minded it because of the Stealth Rocks being gone. It's just the one thing. So as he switches out here, I just went for knockoff because that could basically two it KO every single member of his team. I did go for Life Orb on Cronaut because I really thought it would be important to be able to switch moves in this matchup. Uh, I was very tempted to go Choice Band, but I wanted to be able to switch from Aqua Jet or to Aqua Jet if I need to. The downside of that is look at that recoil. I took over, uh, that was almost half of my health just from hitting Ferrothor and losing Life Orb and the Iron Barbs and the Rocky Helmet put me at right, right around 55% HP. So that was kind of ridiculous. So I didn't want to hit Ferrothorn again. I could have used Superpower on it, but I wanted to keep um, my Crawdon around just in case he went for a, a Mian Shao sweep and then I could Aqua Gen him. As he puts Stealth Rocks back up, I bring back in Charizard. And here we begin um, kind of the stall war here as I knock out Reuniclus with the Flamethrower. Now, of course, Charizard is paralyzed. We have that wonderful 25% paralysis rate. But what you forget is that in that fiery spirit, Charizard is being fueled by Embor. That didn't even get a chance to do anything in this battle. So Embor passed on its will to Charizard, and it's just going to be able to continuously go for flamethrower after flamethrower here without getting paralyzed somehow. Now, because I am running a modest nature, I will be able to 2 it KO Hippowdon but because of the paralysis, I'm actually slower than Hippowdon. So what we have here is a stall war where he's basically waiting for me to get paralyzed and I'm and Charizard's paralyzed, so I have no reason to really switch it out. And I'm also worried that he'll go for a whirlwind at the same time that I switch it out. I figure if he had rock type coverage, he would have used it by now. So I'm not too worried about staying in here and continuously going for flamethrower. Uh, he's losing a little bit more health from Flamethrower every single time I hit him than he's gaining back with Slack Off. So unless I get paralyzed, eventually I'll win this war. But the moment I get paralyzed, he immediately has all the momentum because then he could just whirlwind me or wait for me to roost and then earthquake me or all sorts of options open up there. Uh, I was a little bit worried about bringing in Fortress on Hippowdon because Hippowdon can learn a Fire Fang. So that was a little bit of a bother. I'm very surprised to not see Stone Edge on it, or, or at least Rock Slide for my Charizard, but that worked out pretty well. I actually ended up not bringing Venusaur or, or Togekiss to this matchup. Uh, just to explain that choice, Venusaur and Togekiss were what I drafted in the first season of the LBA, and I fully expected Mac to expect me to bring them because Venusaur is my favorite Pokemon, and he actually only had one Pokemon to resist Fairy type on his whole team. So it seemed very obvious to bring that. So that's exactly why I didn't bring it. It was a pretty good matchup, but with Rhydon and Embor, kind of some strong wall breakers and then Fortress uh, forming a nice little defensive core with Ry uh, Rhyperior, excuse me, I figured I could play around it. Now the downside about not having Togekiss in the matchup is that I'm not able to use Heal Bell, but somehow I got through all of those turns without getting paralyzed once. So thank you, Embor, for your fiery fighting spirit and channeling it into my Charizard here. Uh, he goes out into his fortress and goes for self-destruct. Uh, he did forget that explosion is a little bit stronger. And by a little bit, I mean almost doubly stronger. But that's okay. Uh, it's not going to matter. I actually did click Roost there because I didn't know what he was going to do. And so I got paralyzed as I went for a Roost. And since I got paralyzed at such a low amount of HP, I am not going to be able to switch out of here and come back in easily. So I just stay in. And he goes for a poison jab. So that means he's probably U-turn, high jump kick, poison jab, and stone edge, most likely. Uh, he might also might have a hidden power fire, which I was also worried about because me and Chow has been known to run hidden power ice for Garchomp. He just goes for taunt here. And 
I didn't mind that at all because I went for Gyro Ball. Mian Shao is actually pretty quick, and Gyro Ball is going to do a lot of damage from a relaxed Fortress, even though I'm not running any attack EVs. As he goes for high jump kick, it does take out my Fortress, but with the Rocky Helmet damage and his Life Orb damage, he's not going to be able to take any hits from here, really. And if he switches out and comes back in, then he's in range of being taken out by Crawdon's Aqua Jet. So that is fantastic. I am going to go into Scarf Aurorus here, Snowmageddon. I literally spent probably two days trying to breed Snow Warning and Timid with perfect IVs on this thing. So I'm very pleased to get this. The other one that I had is Modest, so I really needed to get a Timid one to use a Scarf. Since I know Mianxiao is not Scarf, I know I can outspeed it. And his last Pokemon is actually Charizard. If he was a regular, fully offensive Charizard, Blizzard does around 90% max to Charizard. So I could just go straight for Blizzard here to see what type of Charizard he had. And seeing the damage that Blizzard does shows me that he's actually a specially defensive bulky one. Probably to take on my Charizard. Why? Now he does go for Flare Bliss and Aurorus actually has a pretty decent HP stat. And so he's going to take a lot of recoil here and then he also takes hail damage at the end of the turn. Uh, and that puts him at such a low range that this battle is over. So Crawdon gets to come in and finish things off with a very clean Aqua Jet to the face. So... I'm incredibly happy that I'm able to finally get uh, a win over one of my greatest rivals here, Mac. And so this means that the Venus Venusaur once again open up the Indigo League of Legends with the victory. Very, very pleased with that. Uh, I don't know. This is just going to be the start of a very good season. And it also was a good way for me to kind of suss out my team there. It wasn't a huge problem for me to bring Dual Weather. It also wasn't a huge problem for me to use Crawdon with Sun. Uh, just some, It kind of just makes me more aware of how I need to play with those Pokemon. Uh, I do think that I probably could have gotten up some hazards a little bit earlier on if I had played a little bit more aggressive with my for uh, Fortress, but it didn't end up mattering too much, fortunately. Uh, and I also think things might have been a little bit different had I gotten paralyzed against a Paladon. He would have been able to force me out, perhaps, or at the very least do some damage to my Charizard Y. But I was just leaving Charizard Y in as Death Fodder uh, because I didn't feel comfortable switching anything into Hit Paladon when I didn't have to. And Charizard Y was paralyzed. So not getting uh, the, the breakthrough there on the paralysis wasn't too big of a deal in the end. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching. That was a really fun battle. Mac and I always have fun battles even when he destroys me. Uh, I hate Mega Mawile. But... It was fun, and that's what Pokemon is about at the end of the day. So if you guys enjoyed, just let me know. We have our next match coming up against DRB for next week. I will hopefully have time to do a team analysis, or rather make time, and I won't be sick. Uh, but yeah, we faced DRB in the preseason and didn't win, so we have to come back from that. We have to come back from that. So you guys have a great week, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye now.